Hello everybody, today we're gonna talk about rovers and not only about rovers but also how to get them to other planets and also get them back from the planets. What you're seeing here is just a tiny little rover I created uh, with some science packages and an uh, antenna. On here we have the delivery vehicle, Somebody, some people call these sky cranes or rover cranes and it delivers the rover to the surface and if I would have aligned the landing legs correctly would also be able to lift it back up into orbit at least from some planets. Here without gravity we can demonstrate how that should work but we're gonna look at it how it will perform on a real planet well as far as you can speak about real planets in Kerbal Space Program. This is my delivery vehicle it consists only of two stages, uh, one main stage which is able to get uh, the payload into orbit and the uh, second stage should be able to get you around the solar system. And we just skip ahead to landing the launch stage and I designed it in such a way that it should be possible to land it safely on Kerbin. Yes you can! Unless you put it on an inclined hill uh, where it tips over and crashes and is completely destroyed. So this was completely in vain. But back to the vessel which is now already in orbit around Duna. Yes, thanks to the nuclear engines we're uh, able to get very far ahead in the solar system and now we're deploying our rover crane and we're gonna land this on Duna, just making sure the batteries are activated and the parachutes have already opened, getting down to the surface. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Unfortunately Duna does not have such a thick atmosphere as Eve or Lathe or Kerbin, so you have to still use some uh, amount of throttle to l uh, slow your descent. And if you don't do it correctly, this happens. The tipped over rover crane. Yeah, so, hmm, this doesn't look good. What should we do now? Maybe the rover can be separated. Let's try this. Activate batteries. Rover is running and there it goes. It seems to have survived the ordeal and is happy just driving around on the big red giant. So, but maybe we can get that crane back upright. It should have some degree of torque thanks to the SAS. Whoops! Uh, okay. Uh, no, that wasn't it. That wasn't it either. So, any way to get this back up? Maybe it jumps again? Yes, but I can't uh, tip it over so it lands on its legs because I don't have enough torque and I don't have any RCS because I tried to save weight. Yeah, no dice. This is rather embarrassing. So we just have to try this again, but this time we are going to do it with a little bit more finesse. Re uh, lower the vertical speed with our throttle. This is tiny, tiny radial engines burning the fuel. Look, almost looks like uh, those are RCS modules, but no, they're using liquid fuel and oxygen. Yes, and this is looking much better. Much better. And yes, we're touched down safely on the surface of Duna. And now it's time to get the rover rolling. Just activating the batteries. I always deactivate those uh, so they won't be drained during other maneuvers from uh, delivery vehicles. And we just have to decouple the rover. And then we just delivered a rover to Duna. Which is rather a minimalist rover, but a rover nonetheless. And of course it just can transmit the data it has and uh, is not possible to 
use uh, some bigger science parts like uh, the materials bay and so on. And here we're trying to get back onto our landing vehicle, controlling it from the docking ports, aligning it just below the lander, and yes, we have a connection! Now it's time to get back up in space and to our spacecraft, which will deliver us back to Kerbin. Ready and lift off. These engines are tiny, but they provide enough uh, delta V for uh, Duna, and also, of course, uh, other places that don't, uh, don't require that much of uh, thrust. A thrust to weight ratio, uh, uh, that much of a high thrust to weight ratio, like the Moon or uh, Minmus, and so forth. So we're heading back up into the atmosphere, and then we're gonna rendezvous with our main craft and hopefully try to get back to Kerbin. Just speeding up the video a little bit, so you don't have to watch the entire ascent procedure. But it is looking good, we have enough delta V left to make a circularization burn and also some little bit rendezvous burn. But I think I'm going to skip ahead and save you all of that maneuver node boredom. And yes, we have our rendezvous and as you can see the RCS is only on the main vehicle which lined up really badly here and therefore that is not able to dock with the lander. Honestly, I really did a little bit. Uh, I think I put too many uh, of those uh, radial tanks in there. But after some realigning, I managed to get the rover back into the cargo bay and dock with it. So it was time to get back to Kerbin which, thanks to the huge amount of Delta V still left in this vehicle, should not be any problem at all. Yes, we want to control from the drone core. And yes, we managed to get back to Kerbin. The parachutes have opened. Well, not completely. I've staged them so they open at uh, different altitudes, so the descent will be lowered earlier and a lot smoother. And here we're going down towards the big blue waters of Kerbin. If you want to splash down vehicles, it's really better to do it in water because tolerances are way better, especially if it tips over like this. And everything safe? Yes. But if you know my other videos, you know I don't usually do small like this. So let's see what else we can do with rovers. And yes, here is my ultimate rover creation, the Explorer 3, which has a cockpit and a lab and every science experiment available and also some antenna to transmit them should the rover get stranded on a planet, but that is not our plan at all. We also have RCS to control it, we have uh, some reaction wheels and we have some rockets for additional speed yes jumping and of course crash well that was a little bit too fast but the pilot survived at least for now so let's try it again and jump yes we managed to do the jump and let's head around the corner careful careful oops okay well yeah I think we should work on our uh, driving skills a little bit, but we want to try again. And rockets at first thrusters and 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 no 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 that was not good. But we want to try again. Jumping, yes, and then slowing down a bit, getting around the corner. I really want to make a big jump across the launch pad, but uh, yeah, well not so much. Regardless, we want to get this rover on a planet and therefore I designed this rover crane uh, on the which the rover should drive out if I would not be so stupid and get the wheels entangled with one of the landing legs. Drive around, get back to the crane, get below the docking port, line them up nicely, 
and in theory it should be possible to dock again with the delivery vehicle but for that we have to lower it yeah we're now why isn't this docking it should be docking docking ports are well they're on top of each other actually why aren't they docking yeah well maybe we should try again to lift up that rover crane and we have a dock yes just trying out if that works the radial engines pushing the crane up and of course we have some parachutes for Duna and we just what the hell this little thing of not even 50 tons managed to ruin the runway by landing with parachutes. Huh. What about that? And this is the really, really tiny and delicate uh, delivery vehicle for the rover train. Uh, rover train, of course. The rover train, that would be nice. No, the rover crane will be delivered by this uh, at least to the moon or other planets. I'm going for the moon in this video for the sake of time. But you can get it to uh, Duna as well. Uh, especially if you change the, the big Kerberdyne engines for some uh, nuclear, nuclear LVM uh, motors. Just opening the cargo bays which have protected the solar panels and the communications array and of course the docking port should a refueling operation be needed. And then we get on in an orbit around the moon and here inside the cargo bay we have our rover crane which will now try to get on the surface of the moon, deliver the rover uh, drive around a bit and then get it back to the mothership. If you're thinking why is that stupid guy putting rockets on a rover, well if you have ever tried to drive a rover around uh, across uh, steep inclinations like very steep hills or anything like that, sometimes it's very hard to get them up there and the reasoning behind those rocket engines actually is to get the rover up on those hills, um, but of course for that you would have to engage the throttle very delicately. And we're trying to lower our uh, orbital velocity to get back down on the, well, not back, but down on the surface, firing the radial engines. As mentioned before, this rover crane is also able to land on Duna and also get back into orbit. I have tried this uh, without recording it and it is possible. And here we go down to the surface. Slowly, slowly, very slowly. We don't want to tip over. But we also don't want to get back up into orbit. Yes, slowly going down. The landing lights lighting up the landing zone and touchdown safely landed on the moon now it's time to test out the rover but in order to do that we have to decouple it and there it goes lighting up its surroundings like a big Christmas tree and of course, after succeeding in our mission, we want to head back home. So we lift up our landing legs, so the wheels don't get entangled. Slowly place it under the docking port. Careful now. Maybe we could just hop up. No, the RCS is not powerful enough, so we have to get the crane down. In order to do that, we just lower the legs on this side. So we use the inclination of this hill to our advantage. And yes, that was a success. So now it's time to get back into orbit and back to the mothership. You may laugh at the absurdity of uh, these kind of crafts, but actually 
it, and if you would use that in career mode, it could be quite efficient because uh, you could get that entire thing, the mothership, the crane and the rover uh, up into orbit, then use it on the moon, get it refueled, use it on Minmus, get it refueled, use it on Duna and so on. So you spend about, well, I think one and a half million Kerbal bucks uh, to produce it and uh, then you can use it on pretty much any planet except for well Tylo, Eve, Lathe and Kerbin of course. So here we got the cargo bay and we're heading back in. Lining up the docking ports with Kerbin in the back. Beautiful scene. Really a fan of the big docking ports which just works so much better on uh, big vehicles than the small docking ports. And here we go, heading back into the belly of the mothership, which entire purpose is just to transport this rover crane from planet to planet. The version you can see here is a little bit outdated. I've produced another version of the uh, transport ship which has some additional docking ports on the front and the back so you see the docking port in the front of the rover those are then used to stabilize uh, the cargo inside the cargo bay and yes it is still able to get in the cargo bay even with a protruding docking port so here we're back on the mothership thanks for watching goodbye <laughs>